Now, this gentleman has the entire alphabet behind his name, Dr. Jimmy Brown, MD, DDS, FACS. And before he tells us what he does as an otolaryngologist, we want to know what all those stand for. Morning, sir. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. It's morning time. How are you? Thank you very much. Morning to you, too. Uh, <laughs> notorious uh, devil. <laughs> That's what I call you. <laughs> You'll find out later on why. <laughs> it is so good to see you, sir. Um, Tremendous. Mm -hmm. Explain that big, long word for me, an otolaryngologist. Who, who, who is right. that person? Who is that person? Yeah. You know, I'll start with by saying that otolaryngology was one of the first uh, subspecialization as surgery in general. So uh, way back, and ophthalmology. So it, it governs the study of the ear, nose, and throat, and of course, the rest of the head and neck. Um, you know, neck masses, cancer, allergies. It's a wide uh, scope of uh, practice for, for many of us who do this. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have to admit that this morning when I saw it, I had to draw a familiar paper to say, okay, right. what, what, what is this? But you, you were many other areas before you got here. You, you did dentistry yeah. and all kinds of stuff. So right. um, before mm -hmm. we go any further, though, tell me about the Jamaican connection. I know you went to the outstanding Teachfield High. I know you were in uh, Port Antonio. But tell me about the Jamaican connection, when you left, and why you left us. Right. So, you know, um, we did not have dentistry in Jamaica at the University of West Indies. You know that. So, you know, I wanted to study dentistry. I was influenced by a, uh, an American uh, dentist uh, while I was in uh, high school. So I, you know, I, the only way to study that is to leave the country. And I had all intentions of returning. Uh, but, you know, somewhere along the line, after I finished dental school, um, I was asked to join the faculty, and that exposed me to some medical stuff, and it kind of took me in the direction where I went uh, in terms of medicine. Yeah. Um, you were also a baller, maybe still a baller. So why you give up that? Yes. Why you just give up that? And I could have said, why the man know Messi and Ronaldo and these people? So. Uh, all the folks here. But I also know some of our prominent uh, players from way back, including your brothers yep. and so forth. But yeah. I was not, I was given a little blow because when during my A day in high school, I did not, um, you know, they, they had stopped the competition, right? Da Costa Cup and, and Manning Cup. Yep. Because yep. of the violence that yep. occurred yep. somewhere in St. Elizabeth. Yep, I think they killed the bus driver or something like yes, that. Yes, they yep. did. So yep. I lost. My prime playing years, you, you know, fifth form, lower six, upper six. I missed out on that. So I was kind of upset about that, you know, but I was lucky to get a scholarship to go to college in New York. And, you know, I, I did pretty well there. So, you know, I'm yeah. not so sad, but I would have had the opportunity to play against some of you guys, yeah. you know, some of your brothers <laughs> and all that. Um, and show you, show you what the countryman can do. <laughs> no, but we've seen what the countryman can do. The countryman sometimes much better than the town man. Um, <laughs> did you think you had the quality in a serious way to maybe go professional? Had you continued? Yes, I actually, I actually tried out for the New York Cosmos, believe it or not. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I never made the cut. I made a couple of the cuts. Yeah. But I got to meet Pele and uh, Beckenbauer and all those folks. Yes, man. <laughs> Outstanding team. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you go away and also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so why the move um, from dentistry? Um, why right. that move? Or are you still considered a dentist or no? Yes, I am considered. I'm board, boarded in dentistry and I do some dentistry, not, not restorative dentistry, but surgical dentistry. Okay. You know, like oral surgery and so forth. Okay. okay. So, but the move was basically I, I was selected to a, a while in dental school. My last year, I was selected to a fellowship in uh, at Sloan Kettering Memorial Hospital in New York from D.C. Um, I was one of like five, you know, the American Cancer Society chose to go there. I went there and boy, I saw them do some things in, in, dent, in um, surgery. I said, man, I, I want to try this. I want to take this challenge. So that's how I went. And they, they supported me, believe it or not, the attending physician there supported me going to medical school and wrote a letter of recommendation for me. Oh, fantastic. 
Yeah. In, pre in preparing for this, um, you're board certified. You told me that as well as in facial plastics and reconstructive yes. surgery. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you do that also. So you, you, you sleep, yes. you sleep mm -hmm. at all, Dr. Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> but, but four hours is enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you get a lot of, of, of work with the reconstructive surgery? Yes. Um, uh, it's usually in, in, in reference to uh, patients who have a, a ablative surgery, you know, when they have cancers. Okay. And they, yeah. Okay. So that's my connection with uh, facial plastics. But I've done, you know, I do some cosmetic stuff as well. I'm on the board of the facial plastic as well. So, you know, I do some, you know, some cosmetic stuff as well. But my primary role in facial plastics is reconstructive. You know, putting back the mandible, the jaw, the maxilla, and the nose when, when it's removed because of cancer. Okay, so, so I do a lot of that type of stuff. So what mm -hmm. do you do exactly now? You do a lot of dentistry, yeah. you do a lot of the ear, nose, and throat stuff. Right. What do you do exactly right. now? So I do a lot of sleep surgery now as well as some the reconstructive. Um, sleep is a big uh, topic in the world today. You know, we're learning more and more about sleep and the burden it, it pays on people in the public space, you know, bus drivers, airplane pilots and all that. And we realize that there is a significant sleep pathology that permeates this world that we need to address. And, and we know that surgery can address a large portion of that. So I do um, some cutting edge stuff you now, some new stuff called Inspire, where you implant, you know, a device in the, in the chest like a pacemaker okay. and it stimulates the airway and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. You come to Jamaica often or no? Yes, I do. I do. I'm part of the Jamaica Association of Otolaryngology. I lectured there even the last time they had uh, the meeting. And I know all the docs there. Dr. Shaw is my idol, who, who uh, one of the head and neck surgeons of many years, uh, and coach me and all that stuff. Um, teach me a lot of stuff about patients and everything. So. You know, and I know, you know, most of the doctors have come there. I've, many years ago, I brought equipment and we did sinus courses at University of the West Indies and all that. So I've come back many times doing academic yeah. stuff. Where are, even, where are we there, Dr. Jimmy, overall in medicine? Um, because oftentimes, if you can afford it, you hear someone get sick and they fly off to somewhere else to yeah. be treated. Where are we? in Jamaica medically mm -hmm. as compared to obviously the United States and, and other countries in the world? Not a lot of material resource, but personal resource is there in vast numbers. The docs there are expertise. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. You know, you go from one place to the, you know, Dr. Smith, Dr. Um, Alda Shah, Dr. Uh, Ladi Dunkwa, whom I practice with. Sometimes I come to Jamaica, do some surgery, at the um, uh, facial and oral surgery associate and, and hope grow there. And these guys, I learned from them too. Yeah. You know, they're, they're real advanced. So I would say we, do, we, we don't have a lot of material resources in Jamaica, but they have their brain resources yeah. and skill. Yeah, of Dr. The doctor. Dr. Dunkwa is, mm -hmm. Dr. Dunkwa is my very good friend. Um, anyone you want to yeah. say hi to before you go, sir? Yes. Um, just a shout out my wife, um, uh, Kailia, and my two daughters there, uh, Kate and Madison Brown. And, you know, of course, Ian Buchanan and, you know, folks who play ball and know about you and all that, like Bob, Gary Grant, you know, Nelson Miller has passed now, but all of us were part of a, a, a clique that wanted to play serious football in the old days. Um, yeah, so, and yes, and mentorship. I want to say mentorship is the key to success in this. I was mentored by many folks. We don't have enough time to talk about them, but, but I can tell you a lot of folks mentored me from early days. You know, the, Mr. Weather Brown, who, Byrne, who took me off the, the ocean and put me in school. Uh, Mr. Noel Smith, who taught me discipline, all that stuff. So, you know, I was, you know, really lucky to have some serious mentors in my life that brought me to this level where I'm at. Great, mm -hmm. to, great to see you, sir. Thank you so much for spending mm -hmm. some time with us this morning. God bless you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Stay safe. Yes. Dr. Jimmy Brown, MD, DDS, FACS, a former uh, Titchfield High student. That's it for this week's Diaspora Checking.